I should preface this by saying I am not a chemist. You will have an extremely uh, well-read, educated chemist this afternoon talking to you. Uh, I'm not a chemist. Uh, I'm a guy who plays with the, with, with the box of tricks. Um, the influences of different base spirits on gin. Or, as an industry, we tend to refer to the spirit we buy or make as... How does this go up? No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, neutral spirit, or I should say, uh, neutral grain spirit at that point. Um, and I sort of think back to when I first sort of bought the bits, which is now uh, Thames Distillers. And back in the early 90s, uh, when we talked about neutral spirit, basically we only thought of two. Molasses, that was actually the big one, that's where the bulk of the market was, and grain spirit. And that was really about it. Nobody actually thought of it when you're making gin. Gin at that point was not going through a great uh, period in its life. It was a commodity. When I look back at the records of the uh, use of spirit that we had back in those days, 80% um, of it was going into vodka, 20% was sort of going into gin. Uh, I, we bought the bits of a uh, small distillery which had two stills in it, uh, the two stills we still have today, and I think we probably operated them once a month, maybe. Maybe sometimes we got an odd order from abroad for sort of 10 drums of gin. Boy, that was, that was, that was quite exciting. We operated them for sort of a whole week uh, before we... What a change there's been. It really has. Spirit is now... Well, gin, of course, has gone through a tremendous revival, and coming with that is the interest in the base spirit that we use. So, neutral spirit. Well, yeah, is it neutral? I'd say we call it, you know, quite often you refer to it as NGS, neutral grain, whatever it might be. Um, well, before we go any further, what do the regulations state? That famous EU 1102008. I'm sure you all read it every night before you go to bed. It's exciting stuff. Um, right. Organoleptically suitable ethyl alcohol of agricultural origin of an appropriate quality with an initial ABV of at least 96%. It doesn't really tell you much about neutrality, does it? Organoleptically, that's a good one too, when you've had a couple of drinks, suitable. That would suggest our neutral spirit may not necessarily be so neutral after all. So, do we get any further guide in the regulation? Well, Article 3 tells us that ethyl alcohol used to produce spirit drinks shall comply with the definition set out in Annex 1. It's the usual wonderful way everything's done. You know, you have to read about ten pages and then go back five. Um, so let's go there for a bit of clarification. Now here it tells us that ethyl alcohol of agricultural origin possesses the following properties. Organoleptic characteristics. No detectable taste. Ah, right, OK. Uh, hang on a minute other than of the raw material. So, neutral spirit with taste is what we're obviously working with. So what do the dictionaries and reference titles state? Well, most advise that neutral spirits are rectified uh, alcohol which has been purified by repeated distillation. Mm. So not much help there either, actually. Um, Come to the Oxford English Dictionary, oh, no, that, that's great help. Um, we certainly find we're talking about the Holy Spirit, and I think that's outside the scope of mere gin production. It's certainly well above my pay grade. So what we have as gin producers is the ability to use a base spirit which can be made from anything of agricultural origin. Absolutely anything. But it must have been distilled over at at least 96%. If it's not over at 96%, you cannot call it distilled gin, you cannot call it London gin. It must be over 96 So that leaves 4% to contain water and the chemical compounds in, that are left in the gin, characteristic of, that plant, of the plant of origin. That does leave en enough for the spirit to retain some character. The question then must surely be, is the retained character of the spirit sufficient enough to influence the delivery of the gin flavour. Right. Now, you should all have a board with eight samples on it. I think you have. Um, one to eight they are. Uh, 
very freshly poured um, by our expert pourer, uh, Mr. Nicholas Cook, who I gave him all of 40 minutes to do. Um, if you can count 120 times 8, you'll see that that's uh, quite a lot had to be done. Anyway, um, please, for the moment, would you ignore numbers 6 to 8? Numbers 1 to 5 are all base spirit of agricultural origin, which have been reduced to approximately 25% to let some of the character become more obvious than it would be at 96. Common sources of base spirit used to make gin are currently molasses, wheat and grape, but as I say, anything of alcohol of agricultural origin distilled at over 96% can be used, so fruit, potato, whey, all sorts of interesting things. Now first, um, what I suggest you do as much as possible is you nose the five samples. Now I know they're pretty small, it's pretty difficult, um, and they're not ideal nosing glasses, but it's the best we can do in these circumstances. Then taste them. I suggest you don't try and identify the raw material. This is not a sort of, come on, let's see who can identify wheat from molasses from grape. That's, I'm not, I'm not going to play that one on you. Um, uh, so don't try and identify the raw material, raw material that the spirit is made from. Um, they've all been used, all those spirits have been used to make distilled London gins and comply fully with the current regulations. And what I would like to do is <coughs> by a slight show of hands and first off um, what I'd, what I'd like to ask is, does anybody think, or do you all think, that uh, some of these um, spirits are, are used the same base material? Would you think, just, this is not a test, not trying to be clever, but would, it, would, would any of you think that some of these, just put your hands up, don't worry, I'm not going to sort of nail you, but if pe would people feel, remember we are talking about neutral spirit, there is not a lot of character in this product. Okay, most of you don't. Um, right, now, by the numbers, what I'd like you to do is to vote which spirits you would prefer to make your gin. Again, by show of hands. Now, you can, put, you can vote for more than one. It is not a single one, but this is, just, this is out of interest. Um, I don't think many of us do this every day of the week, is actually look at five, and I will be honest, they are five different base spirits. Um, so... Number one, would anybody vote for number one? One, two, three, mm, not many, so let's put four down there. Number two, oh, that's a bit more, yeah, how are we going? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, number twelve, thirteen, fourteen, say so sort of about fifteen, okay. Um, I will reveal which ones are which, and don't worry. Number three. Oh, yes, now that's a popular one, isn't it? I think I'll do this by percentages. I'd say that, mm, looking at that, somewhere around about uh, 60% wouldn't vote for number three. Number four. Oh, another popular one. Yeah, similar, sim similar sort of level of support. And number five. Mm, a little less here, aren't we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <coughs> nine, ten, yeah, perhaps, perhaps sort of about 15%. Hmm. Um, now, before I actually reveal which ones are which, um, would anybody like to give me a reason why, for instance, they weren't keen on number one? Anybody? Just say, it's all right. There's, uh, nobody, I'm not, uh, not trying to make anybody look silly or anything. It's just interesting to know why people would perhaps not vote for number one. Helen? I, 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 got, I don't know if it's me being oversensitive, but I got a slight sort of TCA... I'm not saying it's poverty though. No, 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 it's just interesting to know. Any other, nobody else sort of just, just generally didn't particularly like it, nothing that sort of you really feel sort of... It's immature to me, I thought it would be fruity. Mm -hmm. Chalky, that's what I thought. What? Chalky. Chalky? Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, all right. Uh, number two. Um, 
Why, first off, why did uh, a few, about 15 people picked it? What did they like about it? I think it had a nice sweetness, rounded sweetness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else have any uh, positives before? Because uh, most of you weren't very keen on it, so then we'll come to why people aren't very keen on it. No? Okay. Why, why those of you who didn't vote for it, one or two voices as to what you didn't like about it? Yeah? It had a little bit of like peppery burn for it, I thought. Mm-hmm. Right. Anybody else? Yeah? It sort of tailed off. It felt a bit weaker. Weaker. Well, they're all, the, they're all basically the same ABV, but okay, you don't feel it's got much body in it, yeah? Uh, number three. Now, this was, this, this was the popular one. Um, what did people like about it? Good mouthfeel. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Mouthfeel. Mouthfeel's coming out. Yeah, just, just, just don't, don't, don't wait to, for me to just... just Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's not unpleasant to think just on its own. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. probably a good starting point. Yeah. Anybody who didn't like it, anything they didn't like about it? No? Okay. Well, it, was, it was mainly most people liked it. Number four. Uh, again, most people, well, the majority of you liked it. I reckon about 60-odd percent said you liked that one. What was it that people liked about number four? Neutrality of it. Neutrality. Quite smooth. Smooth, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Anything else? No, a bit of character. That's good character. Character. Right. Mm hmm. And those who didn't like it, anything that they particularly found they didn't like, what they didn't like about it? Well, it was quite bitter. Bitter. Taste. Bitter taste. Right. Bitter, plasticky. Okay. And finally, number five. Um, this was sort of, there were a few people liked it. Uh, those, those, those who were positive about it, what did they like about it? Sorry, I, for me, it had the same uh, mouthfeel sweetness as number hmm. two. Right, yeah. Why did some people not like it? The zoning don't just just didn't didn't really make much of an impression. We are talking about neutral spirit. This is sort of fairly yeah. I mean, we are down to the, this is why I only jo judge vodka one day a year because I actually find it gets very difficult when we get into things like this. Yeah, I not not to, well let, let 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 me just tell you now which ones were which. Number one, which most of you didn't like, was actually potato spirit. Number two which didn't get a great sell, was neutral grain spirit made in the UK, which most gins in this country are made from. <laughs> so, <coughs> somebody better ring Cargill up and tell them they better get themselves sorted out. <laughs> um, interesting that, I thought. Um, pepperiness, I have to say that my experience, I always say, I mean, the one thing I think about neutral grain spirit made in this country is, Quality is very good, but it's a tough spirit. And actually, and when we come back to, you know, come back round to botanicals in due course, um, and I think it is one of the things when you make gin with, and perhaps it needs to be tough because after all, gin in the end essentially is a mix of drinks. So it's another thing to be thought about. But it is a tough, tr a tough, I think, tough spirit on its own. Um, number three, which you all really liked, I tell you what, proves that actually people aren't always wrong. That's molasses. And yes, I think it makes a soft gin. Uh, for years before gin was back on its rise again, um, there were a number of distillers who would tell you, turn around and say they thought that actually molasses made the softer gin. It is that slightly softer. It's that slightly easier spirit. Um, there used to be back in the 80s some people who were a bit sniffy about it because sometimes the earlier molasses spirits did, did have perhaps a little bit too much character in them. But that's long gone nowadays. I mean, they're superbly rectified. Um, number four, which you all liked, grape. Uh, it's interesting because 
we've we, 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 we've made we've, we've made and there's one great gin that was out on the marketplace there's others which we're working with and I do find that when you start making gin with great spirit you have to be your your recipe thoughts have to actually move quite a bit because it does have a certain amount of character it has a certain fruitiness um, yes it is smooth though um, but it doesn't have the bite perhaps of the grain spirit there's a, there's a certain point there and number five uh, that's rye spirit. So, um, yeah, yes, it's pretty close to English wheat, um, but obviously produced in much smaller, smaller quantities. Um, yeah, uh, if they, if sort of. If, I think that's interesting. It, I would suggest they all are perfectly good to make gin with. But as I keep coming back to, I do think as a gin distiller, you have to think about the gins, you have to taste them, and you have to actually work the character into the spirit. I mean, as gin distillers, I would argue that the general rule is we're looking for the botan botanicals to put the spirit, put the character into the drink, um, and not the spirit. <coughs> um, and I would argue that is exactly what... <coughs> That is exactly what would and does happen with base spirits of, quali of quality evidenced here. But the choice of the base spirit in some circumstances, great, I think being particularly one, but even actually with grain if you've been using something else, um, causes the distiller or the rectifier to reconsider the botanicals or at very least the weight and proportions of the botanicals they're using in the mix. <coughs> right. There we go. There we go. <coughs> I'll try not to go, I mustn't go over the wrong too long, otherwise Mr. Cook will come and cut me off at the waist or something or somewhere more painful. Um, <laughs> sample six to eight. These are all London gins, uh, all made using the same botanical recipe, but with three different base spirits. The base spirits come from three out of the five that I've just spoken about uh, and you've sampled. The gin has been reduced to 20% to make it uh, help the botanicals come out and make it easy, easier to taste. Um, <coughs> the, uh, the gin itself is a fairly straightforward recipe. It's got it's he distinctly heavily junipered, uh, and it's got three other botanicals in it. So there's nothing sort of you know, peculiar or very distinctive particularly about the gin. It's good London yeah. gin. What I would like you to do is nose... The th and taste the three right now. Preferably don't make too many comments to your neighbours, just you. Um, I'd also suggest at this stage you don't spend time again trying to identify the spirit. <coughs> what I would like you to do is to place them in order of your preference and think why. Um, so let's just spend a couple of minutes doing that. Um, I'll run past that one, run past that one. Yeah, well, we're on spirit characteristics, funnily enough. <coughs> um, so, uh, and again, you can vote for more than one. Um, number six, who would like, who likes number six? Fifty-ish mm, percent of you, let's say, for the moment. Number seven. Pretty even, not, 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 not all the same hands, but in proportion pretty much the same. Uh, and number eight, mm, slightly fewer, probably down to say about 35-40%. Anybody have no preference? Right, so there was all one, you, the one you would prefer if you were given the choice of those three gins, <coughs> there was one you would prefer to drink. Um, right, um, number six, molasses. Hey. Uh -huh. Number seven was good old neutral grain, why English wheat spirit, and number eight was the grape. <coughs> so, in going back to those, again, sort of interesting just to sort of uh, discuss why people picked what it, what it was they liked about the specific ones. I mean, number six, what, what is it that people liked about that? A, a really nice floral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really Soft. Nice. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quite quite they just, they sort of, all of the just sit in the right place. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I think they're quite disjointed on eight, so just to carry on. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs
<laughs> Anything that people didn't like about number six? Yes. A bit soapy sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, that's sometimes a characteristic of that one. Great, the number seven. What do people like about number seven? Had a good balance. Uh -huh. Remember, it's not the <laughs> difficult, isn't it? It's not the gin one's trying to, it's actually just trying to see what the spirit, to say, the, the gin is exactly the same across all four, all three of them. But yeah, so balance what in the term of the spirit there, yeah? Sorry, I think the juniper came across uh, more prominently than mm -hmm. number seven. Number seven, yeah. Again, that you know, really clean, clear, quite tough spirit. Number eight? Some, some of you like number eight. We have about 35% of you. What do people like about number eight? Soft. Yeah. Yeah, I, I must admit, I think grape spirit does make a soft spirit, especially with you. And it is perhaps that softness that you then have to think about because a, in the end, what, 90... Well, I would suggest at the moment between 96, 7, 8, 9 percent of gin is, is drunk as a mixing drink. And you've got to actually think it's got to then stack up in the mixer. Um, sipping gins are beginning to make a bit of a move, but they are a very, very small part of the market. Um, so, uh, all right, so everybody had a preference. Any? But I think, again, interesting. I mean, you say, <laughs> yeah. Um, no real clear winner. I and mean, there's not one of those that actually, um, out of those three, that <coughs> became an absolute clear winner. Um, six and seven, yeah, the, the, the grape spirit, yeah, it's slightly different. It's slightly less. Am I ever running? Right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll shut. Um, what I would humbly suggest that when creating a gin of choice, uh, botanicals is the key uh, a most important consideration for a gin rectifier. Um, it is important that it isn't done though, in conjunction with the base spirit. And I think once you know, we've, we've seen enough evidence of that, um, it, it, neutral spirit over 96%, but there is a limit to that neutrality. Um, and I think it's more quite often the detail edges of the, of the gin recipe that need to be sorted out given the fact that, in the end, most gins are made to a specific character anyway. Most brand owners, certainly most of the people we work with, come to us and say they want a gin which does X, Y, and Z. Then everything else has to slot in behind that. Um, current reasons for selecting the spirit? Well, <coughs> if you're launching a premium gin at the moment, I was just in the marketplace, and you go in and you see your customers uh, and tell them you've made it out of molasses spirit, yeah, you've just wiped off God knows how many pounds off the value of the bottle that you can sell. Totally irrationally. Yes, molasses spirit is cheaper, but not to that extent. I mean, call it 20, 30p per litre of alcohol. That does not translate to an awful lot down at the other end. of Nothing like what, in marketing terms, if, as I say, you went in with two gins, one, one was molasses and one was grain, um, I'm quite sure you'd get a higher price for the, for the grain. Um, <coughs> so I think at the moment I would suggest that most spirit selection is marketing led uh, first and foremost and then the producer works with whatever the marketing uh, people want um, but I do see as we move forward this interest in gin uh, we've got uh, David's going to be talking about terroir to us a little bit later um, and there is no doubt about it from where I sit people are getting more and more interested about the raw material that's being used to make the gin. It's all part of the marketing story they can build up. So I can see more and more interest in the various base spirits. Uh, and we've got Daniel sitting down there, and I mean, he's using some malted spirit, I think, in your gin, aren't you, Dan? Yeah. Which, after all, was hardly new. Some people over in Holland who were doing it for sort of rather long before we even started over here. But it, I think it's... In, and it, the spirit is going to become part of the much more part of the story than it has been to date. Just living on the fact of oh, well, it's premium, neutral grain spirit is not going to be the marketing plus. You're going to be. We are all going to be working a bit harder on it. Um, and I can see other sources of neutral of uh, agricultural origin uh, coming forward. There are one or two whey gins. Um, there are certainly, as we know, various great ones. Um, potato. Interesting, the potato didn't perform very well today here, but then we're perhaps not the total marketing audience of the world. 
Um, but there we are. Uh, neutral spirit, well, what is neutral? As I say, we, we use it as a colloquial term, but I think it's proved it is not totally neutral and it is the part of the, the toys that we as uh, gin rectifiers have in our cupboard to play with. Thank you very much.